particles like these so fast with me. Bombs out of mechanics and I have circle words, but no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works. In the last video, we quickly talked about conduction and resistance and what that means when it comes to a metal lattice. So, if, for example, we have electrons which are conduction or conducted in a metal lattice, what that means is that these are freely moving. They're moving unimpeded through the actual lattice, so they're unimpeded through the lattice, whereas resistance would mean that they are actually impeded. So, a same thing. So, in resistance means in a metal lattice, these electrons are actually being impeded, and their movement is not ideal. They're bumping into something or they're being attracted or repelled by something, right? So impeded means they're not moving as they should be. Unimpeded means they're moving freely, not being, not hitting anything, right? So these electrons, first the conduction would mean that they're moving, not being attracted to the positive nuclei, or they're not bumping into negative um, electrons. They're just moving from one side to the next side in, in a good fashion, perfect fashion. Whereas resistance would mean that they come too close to a positive nuclei, they get attracted, they lose energy, or they bump into a negative electron, they get repelled. All these examples would be examples of resistance because their movement is impeded, they're not perfectly moving straight, they're changing their direction and their energy levels as well. Right? And then we also said we want to always apply a voltage if we want to make things move into one direction only. And for example, if we have a negative terminal here and a positive terminal here, and these electrons will be moving from the negative to the positive terminal. Otherwise, they would just be moving randomly throughout the lattice. But that's what conduction resistance was. And the reason why I mention that again is because this says, identify that resistance in metal metals is increased by the presence of impurities and scattering of electrons by lattice vibrations. That's what we have to talk about in this video. We have to cover three major parts. First, if um, so this is our metal lattice, our normal metal lattice, and you can see our positive nuclei and our electrons. So these are our positive nuclei, these are our electrons. And it says here adding other elements into crystal structure. So we have added something then that might not meant to be there, it might, that might be not ideal when it comes to conduction, and that's what we call an impurity. So we have a different atom being added that might not make it a good conductor or might make its conduction potential less than it would otherwise be. In this case, I've just chosen random carbon, so it's a carbon atom in this whole structure, which is right here. But what happens here is usually you know, these positive nuclei allow, you can imagine two positive nuclei, they're perfectly spaced, everything's perfectly spaced, so they're going to have this electron here will have some attraction from, when it's moving past, will have some attraction from this positive nuclei some attraction from this positive nuclei, and because they're balancing each other out, well, that means they're more or less moving straight through it. Right? So it's got a pretty decent, perfect line because the spacing is identical, which means this will move in a straight line because it attracts both sides equally, which means it balances each other out. But in this case, so for example, if it, there's a carbon, random carbon here, then we're going to have this electron will be slightly more attracted so this positive nuclei, and this carbon would actually be neutral, it wouldn't have a charge, or if it would have a charge, then it might be either too strong or too weak compared to the other metal lattice. So that means either it's going to be a stronger or a weaker attraction. I'm just going to say it's a weaker attraction, so I'm going to make a cross. So that means once it gets past this area, right here it was going straight, same attraction on both sides, straight line. Now it's being attracted more to this side, and it's going to hit the actual positive nuclei. So this means now we have resistance, right? This is the idea of resistance, where we have our actual movement of the electron being impeded. So by adding a random atom, in most cases that will happen. Don't call it random atom. Don't write don't write a random atom in your exam. But I'm just saying an impurity, right? That's probably a better word, impurity. So if we add an impurity into our lattice, that means that there's a high chance of collision. And when these collisions happen between positive nuclei and negative electrons, that means that's considered resistance. Another example would be if there's an imperfect metal lattice somewhere. So for example, let's say we have a one of these, so you can see this one here, isn't in its shape. It's not where it's meant to be. And usually these kind of, you know, in a perfect lattice, we have these, these distance here are identical. So you can, they'll be the same 
on every side, and that's what it's considered a perfect lattice. We have everything being identical. That means for the electrons, that's good because they can move through it quite quite comfortably. Because of the mentions, the reason I mentioned this earlier, they can move quite straight. But we have an imperfect lattice. What that means is it'll move, and then there might be you know, this area here, which is a slightly more positive than the other area on the other side, which means it's going to be attracted to this area more than the other side, and it's going to go in that direction. And once it does, again, it will collide with the positive nuclei, and that collision will cause it to lose energy. So that's another example of resistance. So if we have an imperfect metal lattice, that's not good because there's more chance for these electrons to collide. When they collide, their movement is impeded, so they're not being able to move for that lattice perfectly, which means they're impeded, and that's resistance itself. Another example would be if we change temperatures. And the reason why is because something called phonons, and you can hear this word a couple times, phonons. What phonons are, phonons are just your vibrations, right? So your vibrations, and I touched on that also in the last video, you have your vibrations which happen at because of different temperatures, right? We've got absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin, and I'm going to go over the Kelvin scale in a couple of videos time. Zero Kelvin is absolute zero, that's the same as minus 273 degrees Celsius. And then we go to, for example, um, zero degrees Celsius would be, zero degrees Celsius would be 273 Kelvin, and room temperature would be about 290 Kelvin. But at zero Kelvin, we're going to find that these vibrations will be at their smallest, right? That means that they're only going to vibrate a tiny bit because they don't have much energy. Right? So zero Kelvin, absolute zero means tiny vibrations only, whereas, for example, at room temperature, at zero degrees Celsius or 273 degrees Kelvin, we're going to have more vibrations. And if I were to say at, at 100 degrees Celsius or 373 de degrees Kelvin, not degrees Kelvin, just Kelvin, then we would have even stronger vibrations, right? So the higher the temperature, more are vibrations. And these vibrations we call the phonons in a metal lattice. Now these phonons, what happens is if we have too high temperatures, that means we have a higher chance for these electrons to collide with these vibrations. And when they do, that means we will have some loss of energy. Right? So the higher the temperature, the higher the temp, the higher the this is for, again, this is for a metal, not for a semiconductor, it would actually be different. Remember, a semiconductor means higher temperature, the lower the resistance, but for, and the better they're conducting, but for a conduction, sorry, for a metal, we've got higher temperature, the higher the resistance, and the lower the temperature, the lower the resistance. The reason why is because of these phonons, the vibrations, they're becoming bigger, and when they become bigger, that means the chances of a negative nuclei colliding with a positive uh, sorry, positive nuclei colliding with a negative electron become bigger as well, which means they lose energy. And when they lose energy uh, by hitting, again, that would be the idea of resistance. And that's what we have to talk about in this video, the idea of resistance. So again, I go over the actual dot point. Identify that resistance in metals is increased by the presence of impurities and scattering of electrons by lattice vibrations. Right, so your prime examples of an impurity is by adding a crystal, sorry, by adding a random element, a impure element into the whole structure. That will make it the positive regions differently spread out, which means there's a higher chance of collision. Also, if you have an imperfect metal lattice, which means there's some parts which aren't meant to be as close as they are. For example, here we have this area being different to this area. That means we have different regions, which again might attract your electrons a bit more which will also impede their movement. And then we talked about the idea of your vibrations or your phonons, which will increase as we increase temperature. And that means if we increase temperature, we increase the amount of phonons, which also means we increase the resistance, because when they collide, there's going to be loss of energy. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.